Welcome to A Closer Look Today. I'm Jim Bailey. Glad to have you with us. And today we are going to talk about good things that sometimes come from bad things. Uh, we all experience tragedies in our lives, uh, heartache, troubles. Um, but from those, some good things can happen. And we've got a couple of people we're going to tell you about today. We're going to start with Nancy Hart, who many of you probably already know because Nancy, you've been uh, very visible over the past four or five years. In fact, you've done a closer look before when uh, with our good buddy Dave Light. Yeah, that was four years ago. And now you are back to tell us a little bit about what's new with patient scrubs. But let's start back at the beginning and, and kind of develop this story. We say good things can come from bad situations, and, and that's the case with patient scrubs. Tell us how the idea came to you. Um, my husband went in the hospital for cardiac surgery in 2003, and to make a long story short, he didn't make it out. Seven months later, he passed away. But during that time, I saw people being exposed. People, you know, when you're in a hospital, um, you have visitors that are up and down the floors. You have medical staff. You have all these people that see you, and that's just not a good thing as far as dignity. You know, we've all been to the doctor's um, office at least for an exam, and they say, here, put this on, and, and you put it on, and it's almost like, well, why bother? Because exactly. your back's exposed. Now, the doctors want access uh, to, to the parts of you they need to examine, um, but at the same time, the idea of patient scrubs is to be able to allow them to do that in a way that gives you some dignity and some control. Uh, if you have to get to somebody, first of all, patient scrubs is a two-piece garment mm -hmm. that's put together with plastic snaps. So first off, you don't have to take them off for any kind of medical ex uh, test, MRI, CAT scan, x-ray, anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, because of the plastic. Exactly. M many things have metal in them. Pajamas can have metal buttons, Please whatever. Don't. You can't use those because they interfere with the equipment. Um, there is a pocket on the left side of the chest for heart monitors, but there's also a slip below the pocket for the telemetry to come through. And the newer line has two pockets down below for breast cancer patients for their, their drains to go in. Now we have a model, if we can uh, bring your assistant out and show us a little bit about what you're talking about. Now these look pretty much just like what doctors would wear for, for scrubs in a hospital. Actually, they pretty much are. And that's what they were modeled after, was scrubs. These are the plastic snaps. Now, the one thing I do get asked a lot is, how come so many snaps? Mm -hmm. Well, if you're laying in a hospital bed, you're not gonna use all these snaps. But if you're up walking around, you don't want people to see your skin. Right. So that's why all the snaps. Also, they're adjustable at the, the... The snaps are to allow Easy physicians, access. nurses to have easy access for right. taking your blood pressure, giving you shots, uh, examining different portions. I've had many do. doctors tell me that they are so tired of having to cut off a hospital gown because they can't get to a patient. Mm -hmm. So all you have to do with this is grab a hole in them, and I promise I won't expose <laughs> you, and the whole top comes off. Now introduce your... Uh, this is Sarah, my new assistant, and, um, well, I, I kind of hired her to do my... <laughs> And today she's become today a model she's as well. She's become a model. Yeah. But um, <laughs> uh, we also offer long pants. We don't have any in yet, but we mm -hmm. will be. And I cannot stress this a month, um, enough. There are two things that everybody needs to remember. Number one, get your scrubs before you need them because you never know. You absolutely never know. I carry mine in my car. Do you find people are buying these simply to oh, use them as pajamas and, and they wear keep them pajamas. wear them at house? I have doctors in Florida and actually up here in Franklin Woods I have a doctor that's sleeping in them. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you can wear them outside. I have a neighbor that works in her yard in them. Sarah, are they comfortable? Yes, very. They look very light. The material yes. is very thin. It's polyester and cotton so that you don't never have to iron them, you just pull them out of the dryer, pull them and, out put them dryer and put them on. And you have a variety of, uh, of a lines of them line. as well. Yes, we have a children's line too. This little duck is our logo, mm -hmm. our trademark. Um, when Bobby was in the hospital, Jennifer, my daughter, gave him right. a little stuffed duck and this became our trademark. But these can actually be worn as play clothes. <laughs> now, children probably don't care about whether they're exposed or not, but this is as much as comfort for them as it is. Absolutely. And another thing too, hospitals, I, I did research on that. They have a lot of workman's comp claims from mm -hmm. trying to lift somebody to dress them, a critical ill patient. You don't have to do that with these. You just roll them on their side, clean them up, roll them back because the snaps mm -hmm. are all the way up the top of the leg too. Now they snap along the arms. They, they snap, snap along everywhere. the legs. They snap down the sides. Mm -hmm. 
will this literally become one open garment if you un two undo pieces. those two pieces? Two pieces. Front and back. So. And the bottom is one piece, but it lays flat. So actually it's... Almost like a diaper. Yeah, I exactly, mean, but not. Um, and you can wear, for people that are incontinent, you can wear liners mm -hmm. inside them. But they're also adjustable at the waist. So one size will fit many people. Um, the one, and another thing I want to stress is don't ever, ever, ever buy them, buy them form-fitting because they cannot be form-fitting. Most people in the hospital carry fluid. So you want them big and loose? They have to be big. They so have to be So if you normally loose. wear a medium thing, you're probably going to want to go to a large just to have that extra Exactly. I go, I, I go by weight more or less rather than size because I know what size I wear, but these, I wear a medium in these. Um, we will take a, uh, a short break here in a moment, and when we come back, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the business aspect of this as well, because a lot of what we want to kind of focus on are the entrepreneurial efforts that are going on and how you turn an idea into a business. So we'll talk about that when we continue in just a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back once again to A Closer Look. We are talking with Nancy Hart from Patient Scrubs. Now this is a self-started uh, corporation, you would have to say now, that um, as we mentioned, the idea came to you when you were watching patients during uh, your husband's battle with, with heart problems. Mm -hmm. um, how did you go from having an idea? I, I am assuming he was exposed with, uh, with these gowns and you saw the doctors wearing these nice comfortable scrubs and you kind of put the idea together? Or? Well, what happened was I saw not only him, but I saw other people. When you're sedated in a hospital and you don't realize what you're pulling on, and it's, it's very dangerous to pull lines out. Right. Um, so all the lines that you wear, that, that they put on you, go in between the snaps, which is great because then when they have to get to you in a hurry, you don't have to unhook anything, just pull the front just off. Just pull the front off. Um, also, uh, I, it, take, it took me almost nine years to get them perfect because mm -hmm. every time I turned around, there was another market for them and I had to adjust them to fit that market also but I worked with a lot of the CCU nurses and doctors and every time I made a change I would run it by them and say okay this is not going to hinder what you're trying to do is it now you saw the idea and and you had the idea of gee wouldn't it be nice if we could create something like this how did you take that from the idea of wanting to create something to the actual execution of it well the first first prototype he wore the hand stitch product in the hospital mm -hmm. and then I ended up wearing the final product because I went through breast cancer right. almost well it's been going into my fourth year so I'm a survivor at that mm -hmm. and but it, it wasn't it wasn't easy I set up a corporation in his name mm -hmm. and the corporation was set up so we could help people was your idea then to honor your husband and exactly and provide a provide an opportunity for people to have this and you want, and you set about figuring out how to do this. How did you did you go to friends and say, "I've got an idea for a business. How do I get this started?" Or no, I what just was your, kind, what was it your, was kind of winging it. It was it was. <laughs> I took a big chance. I actually first went to my daughter and said, "Look, you know, I have this idea. I want to help people," and I took his life insurance and started the corporation. And from that, you have grown it how? How did you go about uh, taking the idea and these original first prototypes and getting them into something that you can now take out to the community? It's good people, good people. I have so m met so many people up here in the Tri-City area. I mean, I don't, like I was telling you earlier, I don't have a name anymore. I'm now the Scrubs Lady, mm -hmm. um, it, which is great. I mean, it's phenomenal. And I get calls day and night from people that have read the um, press release and the story behind this and everybody that goes through something like that wants to talk to somebody that's been through it and that's what I'm for. I want to help them. So you're part counselor as well. Absolutely. Now you have gone to the, taking your product into hospitals. Sometimes you can buy them on site. You can buy them through your website. How do people go about finding you and, and how wow. do you market it? Because you mentioned that you're expanding. Things are, you're going Facebook, to markets where you haven't gone before. Facebook, LinkedIn, mm -hmm. Twitter, networking groups, it's all. And it was all new to me. I wouldn't even, you know, I didn't even know how to use a computer. So you've learned as you go. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it wasn't easy, but it was well worth it. And I have, met, like I said, I've met so many people up here that it's time for a change. And the one main thing is everybody wants their dignity back. Mm -hmm. now you. 
when you begin something like this, you can't be shy about it. You have to have confidence in what you're doing. Or did, did you ever have that moment where you said, well, I'd like to do this, but I don't really think I can go through with it? No, I never did because I believed too much in it. Mm -hmm. if, I think if you believe in something, and, and, you know, I don't, I don't think you can lose if you do something out of love. You really can't. And so you weren't shy about it. You were very aggressive about learning things like Twitter and Facebook, about going up to people and saying, <laughs> I have a story to tell you. People still laugh at me, yeah, because I still can't copy and paste on, <laughs> <laughs> on a computer. But yeah, the networking groups help and just meeting people. Mm -hmm. And I used to be very shy. That was a long time ago, though. <laughs> <laughs> so undertaking something like this can change your personality as well. Uh, yeah, it did. It really did. But I figured if I was going to get it out there, and, and my philosophy is I'm never going to quit mm -hmm. until it's out there. You are talking now, I and mean, we saw just a moment ago about the children's sizes, about mm -hmm. uh, different colors, different, uh, different varieties of things you can get. This is... This is constantly expanding, constantly changing, and that's part of any business model. You have to adapt to what people are looking for. Is that exactly is that what you have found? And you mentioned you talked to doctors and and nurses. What do they tell you about how you oh, how they you should develop it. your product? They absolutely love the product. I just made. I wanted to make sure that any changes I made to the product, to patient mm -hmm. scrubs, did not hinder the way they took care of their patients. Well, it certainly is uh, easy to find patient scrubs. All you have to do, you can go online and, and Google it, and, uh, <laughs> and Nancy's story will come up in the product. And there is a number below us that you can see now, and uh, that is a number you can call to find out more information about patient scrubs as well. Nancy, thank you for coming by, sharing with thank us you. again, um, and, and we'll have you back for an update again. But, uh, Thanks, Jim. I it's always it. a heartwarming story to know that uh, something good can come out of a, a very bad situation.